the Buddha pointed out some very important, I guess, two very important points to make. One is to avoid extremes in your spiritual quest. If we are so preoccupied with material possessions and material comfort and sensual pleasure, it is very, very difficult for us to make real progress on the spiritual path. We can be exceptionally good people. We can be very virtuous, very good hearted, very compassionate, very, I mean, very nice. But in order to arrive at enlightenment, there has to be a willingness to cultivate renunciation. And renunciation begins with simplifying, moving away from the preoccupation with sensuality and uh, the sensual experience and distractions, and you know, devoting more and more energy, more and more time towards the training of the heart and the mind, so that the heart and the mind can become a tool fit for the spiritual quest. And that is the practice of meditation. And so that's the first thing to, you know, he says, I mean, obviously these five ascetics were not indulging in sensual pleasures. <laughs> they weren't sitting around watching TV and uh, smoking pot or drinking beer. I mean, they were very committed spiritual seekers. So that was easy. But they actually had one other wrong view which was the, still holding on to the belief that for spiritual progress, you have to torment the body. And they were not really committed to the practice of deep meditation. They were more preoccupied with asceticism. And so the Buddha said, you must avoid the extreme of physical torment and cultivate the middle way with an emphasis on meditation. And he taught the Four Noble Truths, the Fourth of Being, the Eightfold Path of Practice, which is called the Middle Way. Now, these days, uh, I don't think many of us are given to too much asceticism. Um, and that's good. That means that now we have an opportunity to uh, give up some of our hedonistic tendencies so that we can regain the middle. I mean, I think in our Western culture, we are unfortunately you know, hindered by the so much distraction, so much preoccupation with um, material and sensual pre distraction. And that is a big hindrance to uh, cultivating a truly refined spiritual life. Not to say that we can't be wonderfully good human beings, but it is difficult to cultivate refined meditation when we are so preoccupied with the external uh, world. So he started this teaching um, with those five ascetics and gradually the number of monks um, or followers grew over the years. And for the next 45 years, because the Buddha lived to be 80, and so he was enlightened at the age of 35. He started his teaching career and for the next 45 years, he devoted all his time walking and uh, very important to stress, the Buddha did not ride in a chariot. He actually, it is forbidden for monks to ride on anything that is pulled by um, an animal and they did not have motor cars, and they did not have airplanes. Uh, so he walked. And he walked um, from village to village, town to town, and he taught whenever he was invited to teach. Now, obviously, the, the first disciples were, I think a lot of them were ascetics already, but he met a lot of householders, uh, normal people, um, who were interested because his very presence seemed to inspire uh, people. And this is not surprising. Any, any of us who have um, 
come into contact with a, a really authentic spiritual teacher, it's not the words that tell us that he's an authentic spiritual teacher. Even before they speak, you feel something. There is some, an aura. There is a, something about this person that shouts out peace, compassion, loving kindness, wisdom. And then if you are given the opportunity to hear the teachings, those teachings ring true with that authentic spiritual quality and qualities. There is something that is inviting. There is something that pulls us in that we want to be close to and learn from and emulate.